ladies and gentlemen, people, admittedly, up to this point, essentially what we've covered is stuff that you learned in a different class. What we're going to get to now is stuff that is new. It is the magnitude of the forces. We have figured out whether they're attractive or whether they're repulsive, but we do not know their magnitude. The equation for the electric force, F sub E, the electric force, you can also call it the Coulomb force, I will often call it the electric force. It is equal to K, which is not the spring constant, but the Coulomb constant, times Q1 times Q2 all over R squared. This is a boxed equation. This should, the overall shape of this equation should look familiar. This equation looks like what equation, Christy? Tell me the equation, I'll give you It is the universal law of gravitation. It looks very much like the force of gravity, Newton's universal law of gravitation, big G, M1, M2, M2 <coughs> squared. Notice instead of big G, we have the Coulomb constant. So the Coulomb constant is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newtons times meters squared divided by Coulomb squared. And big G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newtons times meters squared divided by kilograms squared. So we have two different constants. We have, of course, the new one is box. Instead of having mass, we have charge. And R is very similar to the R we had before. R class is not. It is. Ah, is it the distance between the center of masses of the two charges? Center of charge, right? Rather than mass, we have charge. So R is not the radius. By definition, is the distance between the center of charge of the two charges. Class, this is especially confusing because R sometimes is. So not by definition, it's not the radius. But sometimes it does work out to be the radius. By definition, R is the distance between the center of charge of the two charges. So we have big K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. Um, let's see. Ah, which one is larger, Coulomb constant or the universal gravitational constant? Miss Clay. Um, the, gravitational. the gravitational constant is actually not larger. If you look at it, it has a larger number, but that times 10 to the what number Grimmer is? Uh, well, it's, it is positive, but it's to the right, so it's moving to the nine places to the right. Notice. This one is a positive 9, this one is a negative 11. So this one is uh, approximately, what, 8, uh, 899 million, whereas this is a very, very small number. So notice that the Coulomb's constant is actually times 10 to the 20th, approximately larger than the uh, universal gravitational constant, which means that the force of gravity is negligible for atomic particles. Negligible. Kaiser means. Um, doesn't really affect it. Small enough where it doesn't really affect it. Atomic particles. What are examples of atomic particles? Hunter. Um, and? Protons and electrons. So notice that the force of gravity is negligible. We can neglect it for electrons and protons. We also need to know these. Micro, nano, and pico. Uh, 1 times 10 to the 6th microcoulombs equals 1 coulomb. 1 times 10 to the 9th nanocoulombs equals 1 coulomb. And 1 times 10 to the 12th picocoulombs equals one coulomb. Kaiser, is that boxed? No. No! Where is it? It's not boxed on the top. It's not in the holster. It's not in the holster. This is different than the holster as well. All right? It's in the open box. It is in your brain. Please realize that micro, nano, and pico are things that you need to know. They're already in your brain. You need to access them. 
if it comes to a quiz or final exam, you will not be able to, uh, you're more than welcome to ask me, but I will not answer a question as to what micro, nano, and pico mean. Please be aware of that. 